What's up there, ladies and gentlemen? I am very excited to get this battle started. Me and P. Flogmeister are going to be doing a best of three, and this is going to be uh, a long-going series for the Pokemon Endeavor League. And yes, I know it's I, I know it's misspelled, but uh, it's supposed to be like Endev Hour, like our league that we had created, and it was created by Moxie Boost. He was the founder of it. Not an excuse to not have to redo the logo. Not one, not whatsoever. Um, <laughs> but we're going to be having um, a battle against P. Flugmeister. I'm going to leave all of his information down in the description below. He does a lot of smoke and OU battles, a lot of team building for that. So if you're into singles and you're into smoke and uh, OU, please give him a check out. He's going to be playing VGC today, which is my main content. So uh, we're going to how well he does we're gonna see how well I do you're gonna see that I am using a team that is pretty um, <clears throat> pretty familiar to my channel of course it's gonna be mega camera up now if you're wondering uh, what the Pokemon Endeavor League is it is a series in which Pokemon content creators on YouTube um, create this league in which we battle one another, we use five Pokemon that we select to be on our team, and there is a list of Pokemon that are usually non-viable to be used that week. But Mega Camerupt is one of those Pokemon that are considered non-viable, or I guess fun. Um, so, yep, this team really should look familiar to you all. It's definitely different from the team that I had used on Road to Regional on my channel. Um, if you're curious as to what the entire Pokemon Endeavor League is, um, give, the, um, give the link down in the description below a check out. Um, that is the video that Moxie Boost had made. Uh, and it basically describes exactly what we were going to be doing throughout this entire series, and um, I think it's going to be really, really fun. It's going to be um, not as competitive because, of course, we're going to be using like one non-viable Pokemon, uh, non-non-viable Pokemon, um, and it looks like P. Flugmeister is going to be using the Moltres, and Moltres is definitely one of those uh, Pokemon. So it looks like Mega Cataract is going to be really good against this team, especially if I can get the sun up with Aromatisse. So I can, I'm already thinking Aromatisse and uh, camera up right now and uh, Bulu actually looks not half bad because I could switch terrains um, I can hit the road on which is basically the only thing that can hit my camera it's really hard under the trick room you can hit that pretty hard I can also nature power it too that's one of the new tech moves that I have on my camera up um, so there's some changes that I'd made on this team um, and you're gonna see them if we do actually uh, pull them off. I'm, I'm gonna treat this like as a regular um, BGC battle um, I'm gonna write the team down like I'm gonna write uh, the items and I'm gonna write the moves and stuff like that down <clears throat> I, I could definitely see Eggslash leading right here um, To get off a never-ending nightmare You could definitely see that Hmm, do I want to lead the Mimikyu? I really need to bring the Aromatisse here, though, for for the Rotom. I think the Aegislash comes in the front, but I'm going to have to do this right here. I'm going to definitely bring the camera up. Do I bring the Snorlax? At first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the Bulu and see how that works out so that we can actually use Nature Powers to our advantage if we do get in that situation. So, good luck to you, uh, P. Flugmeister, and let's have fun with this best of three. All right, so we have the we have the Metagross, we have the Hypnotop, we have the Rotom, the Eggslash. I think the Eggslash is definitely a really good lead on his part because I can't final gambit it, and he has to know that uh, that's one of my um, tech moves on this team. No, he doesn't lead the Eggslash, uh, so he could have brought the Eggslash in the back. He could have brought the Eggslash in the back. So that he could switch it in on the final gambit. Let me get up Trick Room, and then he could take advantage of the Trick Room. But the um, the camera up is still a lot slower than that of the Eggslash. All right. So one thing that he can do right here is go for the fake out into my aroma t uh, into my Staraptor, in which will uh, keep me in. And then um, I'm basically attacking last next turn, and then he can go for the knockout into the Aromatisse because the Aromatisse doesn't really put on too much pressure against the uh, Metagross. Uh, he really can't let me get off a um, Final Gambit off into the Metagross, so I feel like he'll just go for the. Um, I feel like he'll go for the 
fake out into the Straptor. Don't know whether or not he watched any of my videos on the series. So let's see if he does catch me with this and then goes for the fake out on the Iron Head into the Aromatis because that should be able to knock me out. The chip with the fake out and then the Iron Head into the Aromatis should be able to take me out because the Iron Head from Jolly Max Attack Metagross is a roll on my Aromatis and it has like a 17% chance of knocking me out, which is really low. Yep, so he goes for the fake out into the Straptor. Meteor Mash. I think that knocks out my Aromatis. Oh, yeah. So it's... Uh, Meteor Mash is an incredibly uncommon uh, move on the Metagross now. Uh, just because Iron Head is just so much more reliable, um, it is way more accurate. I think Meteor Mash has an 85% accuracy, so you can miss those, like... You can miss those KOs that you need to get. Um, and Iron Head also has the chance to flinch, whereas Meteor Mash has the secondary effect of where you can get an attack rise. So I didn't consider the Meteor Mash right there, but I do know that he has the Meteor Mash now. I can bring in my Staraptor. I could bring in my Staraptor. But yeah, I'm pretty f I'm pretty much forced to bring in my Staraptor right here. Now, the Metagross can either protect right here or switch out into the um, Ega Slash, and Hit on Top can also go for a Wide Guard. I think the Wide Guard is definitely warranted on the Hit on Top because the um, Earth Power really isn't doing too much. He doesn't want to get his Metagross KO'd right here. Could also go for the Stomping Tantrum into the Camerupt. But that really wouldn't make any sense because then his Metagross would be going down. I really think the Metagross protects right here. But I'm going to go ahead and go for the final Gambit into that. And really wish I had Eruption right here. Because if he doesn't go for... Yeah, he brings it up. Probably going to go into the Slash. No, it goes into the Rotom. Okay, so let's see if he does go for the Wide Guard. We'll see whether or not he goes for the Wide Guard after the Mega Evolution uh, has activated I gotta think of uh, a game plan for game two, how to counteract that Metagross. Yeah, he goes for the wide guard, but the Rotom's gonna be going down right here. Definitely one of the um, components on his team that he really doesn't need too much anymore. So I think I can go with Mimikyu. I can probably go Mimilax in the second game, because he can't fake out the Mimikyu, and he can't take me out with the Metagross, and I can get up a Trick Room, then I'll be able to outspeed the Metagross, and then Hitmon Top can't really hit my uh, Mimikyu. And I have uh, Shadow Ball and Never Ending Nightmare for the Metagross specifically, so I can kind of use that to my advantage. And on this Trick Room, I do actually have Protect on my, uh, on, my, um, on my Snorlax. I did fix that because I had High Horsepower on my old team, and I could, like, I would get up a Belly Drum, and then everyone would be inclined to double attack into Snorlax, and sometimes I was sometimes I would lose it, and I couldn't really use it to my advantage. So we're gonna get up the terrain here last, but it's definitely in his favor. This is gonna be in a hub build battle. Uh, I do have the fight in EMZ, really no point to um, show it right here. This is the wrong Bulu set. It's supposed to have Horn Leech, um, Wood Hammer, and Superpower, and it is Fight in EMZ for the Kangaskhans. Um I can very well see a... Um, I'm not really threatened by the Hitmon top. The Lele is definitely a bigger threat right here, so I'm going to go for the double up into the Lele. I think the Hitmon top would switch out for Fake Out Pressure and go into the Metagross. Oh, it goes for a feint. Okay. That's not going to do too much damage. It's a, it gets a critical hit. He's going to go for the Psychic, likely into the camera up. Okay. It's a good thing I attacked right there. So the, And he gets a double crit. <laughs> a double crit. So that's not looking too good. So the Lele is going to live on 1 HP. Wow. Okay. So we're not getting too fortunate in this battle. Although we're, it's going to be an uphill climb regardless. Him on top providing here with a lot of support. I knew he was going to go for the wide guard, so I shouldn't have gone for the um, heat wave on that one turn. Regardless, if I had gone for an earth power into the Metagross, he switched into the Rotom anyway, but I could have gone for an earth power into the Hitmon top to at least get some chip onto it. Um, so right now I'm just going to protect my um, Bulu, and I'm going to go for the earth power. Faint's not going to be able to take me out. He could very well go for the close combat into the camera up, which would be a really good play. So he can go for like the Meteor Mash, um, Meteor Mash into the Tapu Bulu. All right, so I'm going to go for the 
play Tinium Z. <sighs> Maybe we get a crit. And I'm going to go for the Earth Power into the Metagross. Let's see what happens right here. Because I, one thing I was going to say is that Meteor Mash actually can miss. Meteor Mash is putting in a lot of work right here. If it was Iron Head, I don't think I'd be having this big of a problem. Yeah, and he goes for the close combat. So one thing I was kind of banking on right there, because I felt like the um, the Hitmon Top was just going to go for a close combat, although I resist it, it is, uh, we didn't have much HP left. Uh, the crit probably did matter with the Lele, uh, because I feel like if I didn't get double crit right there, I probably would be out of the range of a close combat, and I might have been able to get off an, uh, get off an attack right there. Uh, but good game to Plefogmeister. We're going to get into game two. I think my game uh, two plan is going to be switching up um, my lead right there. Definitely was not anticipating him to have Meteor Mash. And um, it'd be interesting to see later on in the format in VGC whether or not the Snor um, excuse me, not the Snorlaxes, the Metagrosses would be running Meteor Mash over Iron Head just to get that extra jam uh, damage. Uh, I know that Iron Head KOs the Lele's. Iron Head doesn't KO my old Bulu because it was ex extremely bulky. This Bulu is a little faster and it has uh, a little bit more attack investment for uh, the one hit KO on uh, Kangaskhan's when I'm not intimidated. Um, and also to outspeed uh, the standard uh, trainer tower choice specs speed. Um, like speed EVs, which I think there's 28 EVs in speed, which gives it a speed stat of 109. So I have like a 110 speed uh, EV on my Bulu, which actually is a lot of speed EVs in Bulu because Bulu is the slowest Tapu. Um, but I wanted to be able to uh, outspeed the Feenies, get off a wood hammer, which I don't have on this set, unfortunately. I have, I have bulk up. Um, another thing that I was also considering running on this set was, um, was running the... Uh, <laughs> They hit a power flyer, that's it. Because I would be in sun, and then Firethorn gives this team such a huge problem. And uh, I could go for the hidden power flyer for the Oko into the Firethorns. But if I was running that set, I would likely have to run like uh, hindering speed nature just so I could take advantage of what little special attack that Bulu actually does, ha uh, does have. Alright, so let's switch this up a little bit. Cyrus might be our uh, bad luck charm. So we're going to go ahead and pick Necrozma uh, 1 because Necrozma theme is just banging. One of the best soundtracks that they could have added to this game. So good luck to you, P. Flugmeister. We know that the Hitmon top has the wide guard. Uh, couldn't really confirm with the that the Lele is specs. I don't think it was. Um, because the I think I think a crit specs Psychic, even if it's outside of the terrain, would have been able to knock Hammer up down. But it is Psychic. It didn't protect, so we don't know whether or not it's Choice. Likely not Specs, at least. Could be Scarf. Uh, he brought the Rotom. Rotom didn't even get an attack off. Didn't bring the Ega Slash, which is interesting. Um, didn't bring the Moltres, either. So, one thing that I did want to do is bring the Mimikyu, bring the Snorlax. Um, that might be... That might incline him to... I could go for the... Could go for the Z Destiny Bond actually, and then the Trick Room. Hmm. I think I might bring the Staraptor in the back just for the ability to go for a final Gambit KO into something, unless he brings the Ega Slash. I don't know whether or not the camera up is the call on this because I might not get up Trick Room. If I don't get up Trick Room with having camera up on this team, it's not looking too good. Um, I still really like Bulo. Gonna have to really play around that Metagross. And I feel like I'm gonna bring the Staraptor, and we're gonna heavily rely on the Snorlax. And one thing that I just forgot <laughs> we don't have high horsepower in the Snorlax anymore. I forgot that in just that small amount of time that I just mentioned that in the previous game. Um, because I was thinking to myself, is he, if he does bring the Ega Slash. Thinking that I might not bring my, might not bring my, okay, so he's the same lead. He might have the same Pokemon in the back as well, because he did win that game. No reason to change something that is not broken. Uh, Intimidate's not going to matter, because we're special Mimikyu, and we're going to get a Belly Drum off with the Snorlax, hopefully. So, I'm going to go for, because if he, if he has, if he has the, uh, 
the the egg slash in the back, we're we're pretty much toast because we can't hit with the Snorlax. If the Mimikyu goes down, there's nothing in the back that can really hit it. Oh, hopefully, he doesn't have the egg slash in the back. We're gonna go for a Z Destiny Bond right here because that will uh, force the. Um, let me see. So Z Destiny Bond. That, he can also miss his Meteor Mashes into the Mimikyu. I'm gonna go for a straight up Belly Drum right here. He could go for the Close Combat. Uh, and the Meteor Mash, the Meteor Mash will go into the Snorlax, but I don't anticipate it would do too much damage. And he's pretty much forced to go into the Mimikyu the following turn. Uh, if he wants to not allow me to get up Trick Room, then I can also protect if I'm able to get my Belly Drum off right here. So let's see if he does go for the straight up Fake Out into the Snorlax, because that'll go... Okay, so he's probably going for the... Uh... Okay, cool. So he's going to break the Substitute Zen Headbutt is also an inaccurate move. That's why I never really like Snorlax, uh, not Snorlax, Metagross in VGC 2000 and, um, so this is going to draw a close combat into the Mimikyu, which is going to be great. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't really like Metagross all too much in VGC 2017, and one of my teams that I brought to a mid-season showdown as a rain team, I actually had, uh, scope lens on it so that I could actually have higher accuracy. And we're going to get the belly drum off, and this is a pretty free belly drum. Which is great, and I might be inclined. Might be inclined to. Because if he attacks with his Metagross into the Mimikyu, he, the Metagross is going down. Close combat will likely do half damage. Um, so, of course, I go for a Trick Room right here. And then I am going to go for thing is, do I go for a recycle or I straight up go for the KO into the hip on top? Because the hip on top can't touch the Mimikyu. So it's going to be inclined to go for a close combat into the Snorlax. It doesn't know I have Protect. It could very well Protect, but the Metagross is likely going to knock out the Mimikyu. It'll sacrifice his Metagross. And I'm not getting any mileage with that because I'm still outside of the Trick Room with the Snorlax. I think I'm just going to go for the straight up recycle because if he doesn't bring me in berry range, I'll at least get the recycle off because he's going to go for the meteor mash into the Mimikyu. So the um, Metagross is going down. It's one less thing that we have to worry about. Hopefully the Aegislash is not in the back. We could bring in our Star Raptor now because we're not going to be able to get up the... Um, the he's going to reduce his defenses also. So we're going to get the recycle off. I prefer... I don't want to say that I'd prefer to go for a um, a protect right there. I would have had less damage actually on me, so a protect would have been better than the than the recycle. I just didn't anticipate the um, close combat actually to do as much damage that it did. Who can he bring in right here that he had brought in the first game? He brought Rotom, and then who else did he bring? The Lele. I'm going to bring in the uh, Straptor for the Lele. I can also bring it for the Rotom. Okay, it is going to be the Rotom. Rotom can't really touch Snorlax. So I can go for the final Gambit into the... Yeah, I can go for the final Gambit into the... Um, into the Hitmontop because I'm not confident that the Brave Bird would be able to take out the Hitmontop at negative one. Because it is at negative one. Yeah. And <sighs> I'm going to go for the straight up final gambit into that because if he didn't bring the Ega Slash, he can't switch anything on the Hitmon top. And then I'm going to go for the return into the Rotom because if he does have the um, Lele in the back, should be able to win with the Snorlax and the Bulo because I'll be able to switch the terrain. Alright, so the hip on top goes down. I could have recycled right there, unfortunately. But, uh, not going to be the case. I did want to exert some pressure with a, with a return right there into the uh, Rotom. Because that would be able to take it out. Uh, right now, what I can do is I can go for the... Unless the Rotom has like some type of tech move, like um, Hidden Power Ice, and then the Lele Psychics into my... Or Moonblasts into my Bulo. That might be able to take me out. I don't think. I don't even think a combination of Psychic, I mean, a Moon Blast and Hidden Power Ice would be able to take me. I just have the Lele in the back. So next game, he's likely. If I do win this game, I'm not not saying anything. Not jumping the gun yet. Um, we're gonna get up the grassy terrain, which uh, the Snorlax is definitely gonna be able to benefit from. The double up into the Snorlax isn't gonna be able to take me out either. 
The biggest threat right here is definitely, definitely, definitely that Lele. And the Rotom just had Protect it. Alright, so he's going to have to double up into one of my Pokemon. And if he double ups into one of my Pokemon, which might not even be able to take out either of my Pokemon, which ends up being the Bula right here. The Moonblast would have done more damage, but might have been going for the uh, special defense drop. Will-O-Wisp. So Will-O-Wisp wasn't something that I considered, but this still should be able to take out the um, uh, Rotom. Wow, so that might not be a roll. The Lele might be able to just take that. That's That's pretty interesting. I think the Rotom will be able to live this. Yeah. Because Rotom is generally pretty bulky. We reveal its item, which is a Citrus Berry. Um, next turn, the Lele will be able to go down. I anticipate him to go for an attack into the Snorlax because I have not revealed a Protect yet. I don't think there is any reason for me to Protect, though. Because what I could do is I could just go for a Horn Leech right here. And then I can go for a... I can go for a return right there. There's no reason for me not to double protect. There's, uh, I mean, a double attack. There's no reason for me to protect. I don't want to reveal the protect on the Snorlax. Because this Psychic's not going to be able to knock me out barring a crit. Yeah, looks like we're good. He does get the special defense drop. Uh, and he might... Yeah, he's going to go for the Thunderbolt into the Snorlax. You don't Thunderbolt into the Bulu. Uh, we can get paralyzed, which is good. We're going to be able to get all of our health back right here, which is not really going to matter. Uh, we're going to go into the room right there, and then we're going to be able to get off the return. It's going to be able to clean up the Lele, so we're going to be going into game three. So, the Snorlax, Mimikyu and Snorlax were definitely the call right there. But, again, the one thing that I'm going to have to worry about is him bringing the Aegislash in game three. So, I have to consider bringing the Camerupt. Question is, does he... <clears throat> does he bring the Metagross in the front now? Does he bring the Metagross in the front? All right, so this is going to be this going to be a tough game three. We've seen the Thunderbolt. We've seen the Protect. Lele only went for Psychic. Could very well be Choice. It could be, it could be Choice Scarf. It just was not doing enough damage for Specs damage. All right, uh, did not bring. He's got Faint. Close combat and fake out. Yeah, he doesn't have protect on the hit on top. We have Meteor Mash, Zen, Headbutt, and I only imagine he's going to have protect on his Metagross. We're going to go for game three right here. I'm trying to think of a game plan because I highly, I really feel like he's going to be going with the Aegislash in uh, game three. It's the greatest answer to that of my. Of my mimic, like him leading the Aegislash and the Metagross, is a really, really good lead on his part because he can get, uh, he can probably even KO me with a Shadow Ball, but it'll pro like, probably go for like a Meteor Mash, Zen Headbutt into the Mimikyu, break my disguise, and go for the Never Ending Nightmare. Not allow me to get up Trick Room. Granted, I can go for another Z Destiny Bond. His Aegislash goes down. Actually, that's not that bad of an idea because if the Aegislash goes down, it's my biggest problem, my Snorlax, and then I can bring my Staraptor in the back. Hmm. I still have yet to reveal the Protect on the Snorlax as well, so that's working in my favor. Unfortunate that the Moltres really doesn't have much uh, utility right here on uh, against my team, other than maybe the Tapu Bulu. Um, does he bring the Rotom? Hmm. A couple of questions here, because the Metagross definitely comes, the Lele likely comes... The Aegislash, I feel like if I was in his position, I would definitely bring the Aegislash. Do you bring the Moltres? Just for the hell of it, because that's one of the Pokemon from that list that we pick from not too vi uh, like non-viable Pokemon. It could bring it from my Bulu. My Bulu can't do anything to the Moltres. And I can't really hit it with the, the Camerupt. But I can with the Snorlax, and the Snorlax is definitely going to be the MTV of this series if I end up winning. Hmm, if he brings the Moltres, you're definitely bringing the back. I feel like if I was in his position, I would bring the uh, Aegislash and I would bring the Metagross in the front. Still going to go for the same old Mamelax lead. Uh, Snorlax uh, can't be hit by the Aegislash, uh, although I can't really hit it in return. I'm going to bring the Staraptor. I bring the Bulu and I bring the camera up, though. Because the Aegislash, though. Hmm, it's going to be a tough one. 
I'm going to bring the Bulu because I'm I'm solely going to bank this off of him leading the Eggslash and the Metagross or something that can possibly counter my Trick Room, and then the Eggslash goes for the um, Never Ending Nightmare into my Mimikyu and ends up taking me out because it's like the only way that it can possibly take me out. The Hit on Top can't take me out. The the um, the um, Rotom can't take me out. The Lele is likely True Scarf, so it'll be attacking before. Oh, he can lead Lele and Metagross. No, just hit him on top of Metagross. He's taking Lele and Metagross. Goes for the Psychic into the Mimikyu, and then goes for the Meteor Mash into the Mimikyu. That'd be able to take me out, Grant. And I wouldn't be able to get off my Never Ending, I mean, uh, my Z Destiny Bomb, because both of them would be attacking before Mimikyu. Huh. Alright. So, I don't think he goes for. I'm going to Protect right here. And I'm going to Trick Room. Because, again, the Hitmontop can't hit me. I feel like the Hitmontop would go for a Fake Out into the Snorlax, and then a Metagross would go for a big attack into the Snorlax. So I'm going to go for a Trick Room right here, because the the uh, Hitmontop can't do anything to my my uh, Mimikyu. And I don't think he's going to fall for the same old trick that I had done the previous turn, because that single-handedly won me the game. So I'm going to reveal the Protect right here. It's good that I didn't reveal any information if he does double up into that. <clears throat> goes for the fake out into the Snorlax. And he just goes for the save Zen headbutt into the Mimikyu. Okay, so essentially what we had done right there is prevent any uh, chip into the uh, Snorlax. Uh, I have a pretty safe play of going for... Um, it's not it's not too safe. The Belly Drum. Eh, because I can go for the Never Ending Nightmare into the Metagross. And Metagross could very well protect. He could also switch out. But if he doubles up into my Snorlax, not looking good. Because my Snorlax is my win con right here. So I feel like what he'll do is, is double up into the Snorlax. Sorry about that. Um, I'll go for the Belly Drum right here. Close Combat did a lot. I'm going to go for the Belly Drum because the combination of the Close Combat and the, um... Combination of the Close Combat and the Zen Headbutt and or... Yeah, he goes for uh, the Protect right there, which is fine because I'll be able to get off a Never Ending Nightmare, get some Chip off into the uh, Metagross, and I'll follow up with a... I guess a Shadow Ball the next turn. But this is... This is going to be a tough spot because the uh, close combat is going to do a good chunk to the Snorlax. Granted, I can go for a recycle. Let's see how much this does to the Metagross because I don't think after he... I bring... This does about 90% damage to uh, a, a Mega Metagross that doesn't protect, that doesn't have much bulk invested into it. Um, because the Shadow Ball will likely not KO the next turn, which is going to be unfortunate. Yeah, that's nothing. Alright, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. I'm going to go for the Recycle right here. I'm going to go for the Shadow Ball right here. I'm going to go for the Recycle just in case he anticipates my protects and protect and then goes for an attack with the Metagross into the Mimikyu. And then I'll be able to at least be at the same health that I'm at right now. Maybe more if he gets a low roll with the close combat. He might even switch out the Hitmon top again per uh, anticipating a uh, protect from my Snorlax. Eggslash comes in. So Shadow Ball into the Eggslash actually is going to be good. I knew he was going to bring the Eggslash. I knew it. Now that I show the Protect, he's like, he's de he definitely doesn't have high horsepower. Oh, this is going to be tough. The Eggislash for... Like, Eggislash is a huge problem for this team. Yeah, he goes for the close combat. Mm. Let's see how much Shadow Ball is. Probably not going to do too much to Eggislash. Wow, that does a lot more than I had anticipated to Eggislash. If only I had had high horsepower. If I had high horsepower, we'd be in such a good position right here. Alright, so I pretty much have to go for the return into the Hitmon top right now. And then, um, because how many turns of Trick Room? Because we're just wasting turns of Trick Room right here. And then I think I'm going to switch out to my Staraptor right here. <sighs> That's not a good switch, though. 
I definitely need to save my Mimikyu, though. Because there's going to be one more turn of Trick Room left after this. I can't, I can't let my Mimikyu go down. I really can't. Because if I can put him in the blade form, I can knock him out with my Mimikyu with a Shadow Ball. And the Bulu is not really doing too much to the Aegislash. So if I'd anticipate him to do something, it's probably going to be a Shadow Ball into the Mimikyu, if anything, like a Never Ending Nightmare. Uh, never Ending Nightmare would likely take out the Bulu. Yeah. If only I had Protect on my, my Mimikyu, but... Like, what Mimikyu runs Protect? Because if I, I could Protect... Uh, prevent my Mimikyu from getting KO'd, and then I can potentially uh, switch into my Staraptor. Now, I could have switched into my Staraptor that turn, but we'd have one more turn of Trick Room left, and um, having my Staraptor under Trick Room is like literally the worst thing ever. <laughs> uh, I should have brought my camera up. This should be able to knock me out. Yeah. Now, if I brought my camera up, I'd be able to switch in my camera up to now. And uh, he could very well go into Blade Form or go for, like, a um, Bide Guard. But uh, Flash Cannon and or Shadow Ball isn't king going my uh, camera up. <sighs> kind of in the same position, though. Because he can go for a Shadow Ball into the Mimikyu. I'm going to bring the Staraptor. Get Intimidate down onto his Metagross, at least. And then switch into, because Flash Cannon and Shadow Ball are just super effective into my um, Mimikyu. So we can go for a Flash Cannon to the Staraptor, and that would be able to take out the Mimikyu. Oh, goodness. I'm going to take this time to recycle, because it's the last turn of Trick Room. The Metagross will likely be um, going for a Protect right now, and the Aegislash will likely go for an attack, knowing that he doesn't... knowing that he knows that I don't have high horsepower now with my Snorlax. So, not bringing Camera up and then not having high horsepower on my Snorlax really did hinder my ability to do well in this third game, because I knew he was going to bring the Aegislash. But let's see if he goes for an attack into the Snorlax. I anticipate a Protect from the Metagross. He does not Protect with the Metagross. Okay, so really good read on his part. Probably going to go for an attack into the, um... Ah. Yeah, so go goes for the straight-up Flash Cannon. There's really no reason for him not to do that. So, on the previous turn, I should have switched into my, um, Staraptor. Even if, um... Ice Punch, okay. Just going to proc my Berry. Okay, we're still in this. Because I have the Staraptor. I have the ability to go for a... Final Gambit into the Metagross. But the, the Aegislash just goes for an attack into the, the Staraptor. Yeah, there's no way I can win this game now because I can't hit the Aegislash. So I I threw away my win condition, which was my Mimikyu. And I just played absolutely horrible in this game and just gave him the game. There was, there was no reason for me to do that because in that turn where he went for the Never Ending Nightmare, I knew he was going to go for a Ghost type attack into the Mimikyu. I could have switched into my Staraptor. It wouldn't have affected me, and then I could switch out my Staraptor and maybe sack my Bulo on that turn, had my Mimikyu outside of the Trick Room, and went for an attack into Blade Form Aegislash, forced a attack into that, and then if he attacks with his Metagross into my Staraptor, I can get off a, uh, a powerful return into the Metagross with my Snorlax. Definitely did not play this one well. Um, yeah, there's nothing I can... There's, no, there's nothing I can do. I could... Try to go for a Brave Bird uh, crit. Yeah, the Metagross is going to go for a Protect. I can potentially go for a, a Brave Bird crit into the Aegislash. See, really, the only thing that I can possibly do. I don't know whether or not Staraptor gets Night Slash. That would be pretty funny if it did. Okay. <laughs> does the... Uh, does this knock me out? Although, it probably doesn't matter because the Metagross can just go for an attack into the uh, Staraptor. <laughs> and then I just can't hit the Aegislash. Because the Aegislash protects right here. I'm going to go for return. So if he does make a blunder and doesn't protect this Aegislash, uh, then I, ha I have a potential to win. But all the Aegislash has to do right here is either switch out a protect, uh, go for a King Shield, and then the Metagross goes for the Ice Punch into the Staraptor. 
and then he just wins because I can't hit the Ega Slash. I can knock out every single po partner Pokemon to that Ega Slash, but I can't hit it with my Snorlax. So I think High Horsepower is definitely required in 2018 because there's not too many, um, not too many ghosts other than Metagross protects. Okay, does this Brave Bird knock out the Ega Slash? It probably would have if uh, the Grassy Train wasn't up. It does knock out the Ega Slash, and we live on one HP. <laughs> This is huge! And it's unfortunate that he got the double protect. Wow! Okay, we're in this. And I think that's Choice Lele. We're outspeeding Choice Lele. So we have Zen Headbutt. Ooh, Zen Headbutt. Zen Headbutt's gonna do a lot of damage. Oh no, I still think he has this game. Alright, so what, is there any chance of me winning this game? Because the return isn't going to be able to knock out the Metagross. It has too much health. It would have been able to knock out the Metagross. It was around 70%. Uh, the return will be able to knock out the Lele, but all he has to do is double attack into the, uh, the Snorlax. I'm going to go for the return into the Lele. And I'm gonna go for the I'm gonna go for the Brave Bird into the Metagross. I know this doesn't really make any sense, but I'm hoping that the Brave Bird gets a crit and then puts it in range for a return the falling turn. And I somehow uh that's pretty good chip damage. Um So he's gonna double up, he's gonna go for a psychic Zen headbutt. The Zen headbutt can miss. He goes for a dazzling gleam. Giving me an opportunity right here. Still think the Zen headbutt knocks me out though, even though I'm like max defense. It does not! Lele's going down. Wow. Alright, this is this is really, really close. The only thing I can really do is pray that oh I could have could have went for a recycle and protect and stole out the psychic terrain. Let's see if the return gets the KO. Oh, it just misses it. Many turns of Psychic Train. Yeah, there's no way I can win this. I basically have to go for like a triple protect, and that's I don't really think that would work. Now the Zen Headbutt can miss. And I think this this protect is like the equivalent of an NFL opposing NFL team icing a kicker. Like, it can work 99% of the time, and it can fail 99% of the time. That equation made no sense, but um I mean, really, all he has to do right here is go for a, uh... He literally... I guess he can just go for, like, the most accurate move that he possibly has. I think an Ice Punch at this range would be able to knock me out. Um, yeah. So, making a really, really smart move right there. Um, because I think that would be able to knock me out. And then I'm just gonna go for the return right here. So we have to hope that the Ice Punch doesn't knock me out. It doesn't knock me out! This is insane! Oh my goodness! That was such a horribly played game on my part. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, good game, the Vlogmeister. Um, wow. So, not having high horsepower, high, high, <laughs> high horsepower on the Snorlax really did kill me. There really wasn't a situation in which Protect came into play, other, maybe, other than maybe like protecting the... The fake out away, which really wouldn't have um, done too much chip damage to the Snorlax to begin with. Um, so I think high horsepower is definitely the call, and I might have to make that adjustment if I do use this team in the future. I did not use the camera up all too much. I used it in the first game, didn't get to show off the um, nature's power um, tech. The only thing I probably would show, uh, be able to uh, use that against is the uh, Rotom. Uh, usually I have that on teams for Feenies, but... <laughs> The, I think the changes that I made to this team uh, in which that weren't on my team that I was using on Road to Regionals was uh, Max Speed Jolly uh, Staraptor so that I can outspeed uh, Max Speed Modest Scarfed Blacephalons, which we seen on Road to Regionals that outsped my Staraptor but missed its heat wave on my Staraptor. 
So I made sure that I'm outspeeding the modest Blissephalon. So any Blissephalons out there, you should be running Timid because Blissephalon's special attack stat is already uh, sky high. Um, and if you're running Timid, your special attack stat is still going to be higher anyway. Um, uh, I made the po uh, the nature's power change on my camera up. They changed up to EVs to make it a little bit bulkier. Uh, the Bulu has the funny Fightinium Z. It should have the... Um, it should have the super power, the wood hammer, and the horn leech. Uh, just an all-out attacking set. Um, the aromatis it remains unchanged. The speed EVs on my camera up to remain uh, unchanged. Uh, the Mimikyu remains unchanged. And what else did I have on my team? I don't know. I forget. But uh, I hope you all do enjoy this series. Uh, each one of these videos are going to be posted on Sunday. It's going to be posted on each one of our channels on Sunday. There's 12 of us. You can check out all of the channels that are um, in this league down below in the description. Check them out. Subscribe to them so you can see everyone's take on these uh, battle videos, which is going to be really interesting and cool. So I hope you all enjoyed. That was a really crazy game three. I did play it horribly. Uh, not having the high RS power on my Snorlax did really kill me. Not bringing the camera up did really kill me although the camera up outside of trick room uh probably wouldn't have been uh the best call but that's it i'm done i'm gonna stop talking because i know i can call it talk for another 20 minutes and uh i'm just not gonna do that anyway peace